Earlier in the playlist, we looked at the following program. It consists of an input statement that asks the user to enter their age. Depending on the age entered, it actually prints out using one of the statements you can see here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to have a look at uh, this statement here. And you can see that it consists of this string together with this, which converts the variable age to a string. And it also consists of this string here. And in between, you can see that we have this plus symbol, which is a symbol which in this context will join together the strings that you can see in front of you. If we have a look at this string here, we can see I've put a space there. If we have a look at this one, you can also see that I've actually put a space in that particular position there. So when this program runs, if the user, for example, had entered 18, it would say you are 18, so collect your polling card. And we can see there is a space here, and we can see there is a space in this position. And that came from the spaces that I put in the first and the last string in the statement above. What I'm going to do now, if you look here, I've removed this space, and I've also removed the space here. So when I now run the program, this is what I get as the output, and we can see here that it says R18 so, and there's no space. So this particular line now doesn't look quite right, does it, to any user that's actually going to, to read it. Now here you can see a print statement that looks very similar to the one we've just been discussing. It's similar because if we look closely at it, we can see here we have the string UR, we have this here which converts the age entered by the user to a string and we have this which says so collect your polling card. However, we can see here that I don't have a space and we can see here that there is also no space. But if we look between the various entries within this print, you can see here I've got a comma, I've got a comma here and I've also got a comma in this position. What we have different is this. It says sep equals, and then you can see I've two quotes, and in the middle of those quotes I've got a space. Now the sep stands for separator, and in fact what will happen when this particular program executes is as follows. We will see you are 18, so collect your polling card. To understand how we get this output, let's have a look at this string here. Well this string is actually placed in this position in the output. Following this string, you can see there's a space here. Now that space has been placed there because over here we can see that the separator is being made equal to a space. Then of course we output this and this converts the 18 the user has entered. We've assumed the user will have entered 18 to a string and of course it places that here. And of course now you can see there's a space here. And that space is placed there because of, again, this separator having a space here. Because if you just quickly look at this area, you can see there's no space there. So the thing that was responsible for putting the space here was, in fact, this over here. And then, of course, what we will do, we will place this string at the output here, where it says, so collect your polling card. So we can see that this particular print statement takes these three here, and it puts between each of them this space. Now to emphasize the point, I've taken the same print statement, but I've altered it slightly, as you can see by this region here. I've changed the separator to the symbols you can see there. So when we run the program, we can see that it gives us UR18, so collect your polling card, but it doesn't have the space that was previously placed between the various strings that were output by the print. It in fact now has these symbols as you can see here. So in fact we can place anything we like in this separator area and we will have an appropriate output based upon what we place here. Let's now consider the following program. We can see there are simply three print statements, each one printing out their own string. Let's have a look at this running one line at a time. Well, here's the output here. This one's going to execute. And when this one executes, we get this output here. Now, what we have to realize is once that is output, 
the cursor which is hidden from our view at this point is actually moved on to the next line to this position this is called line feed carriage return but I'll not worry about that in this particular video but what we can see now is that when we execute this line which is going to output string 2 that will appear on the line below as you can see here now the cursor has moved down to the next line to this position so when we now execute this line then it's going to actually output the following here string 3 now you can see these chevrons appearing now those chevrons appear because the program has finished executing I'm now going to amend the program we've just been concerned with and you can see the amendment has taken place here and if I just have a look at the first line you can see I've put a comma and following the comma there's end equals two quotes and in between the two quotes you can see there's a space and I've done that for the other two print statements that follow but this is where the output is going to appear now when this line executes it's simply going to print out string one as you can see here now where's the cursor now well the cursor has not moved to the next line so line feed carriage return does not take place because this end is saying put a space instead of moving the cursor to the next line so in fact there's a space here consequently the cursor is now pointing here so when we execute this particular line string 2 appears as you can see here now of course we haven't gone to the next line because of this end here saying no let's have a space instead so when we come to execute this line it outputs string 3 to this particular position here and it puts the space there now when the program ends this chevron will appear but I must stress that these three chevrons here are not a function of the last print statement they're a function of the program actually ending to further emphasize the use of the end in the print statement let's have a look at this computer program here and you can see it's more or less the same as the one we've just been looking at but instead of a space I've put a colon as you can see in these three positions here here and here so let's have a look at the execution of this one line at a time well this is where the program output is going to appear and when I execute this particular line then it's going to simply output string one and in fact it then outputs this colon as you can see it doesn't move the cursor to the next line that's what this end does it stops that actually happening and of course string 2 will now appear in this position as you can see and of course you can see the colon appears there because this is defining a colon should appear in other words the cursor is not moved to the next line now this particular line will obviously be output immediately after the last string and the last colon so it will appear here as you can see and then we get the colon appearing here because this end defined it, it to be a colon and of course the program will now end and we will get the chevrons appearing and again it's important to realize that the moving of the cursor to this last line was not a function of the last print statement it is a function of the fact that the program has ended very briefly I would like to discuss program style as an aside to the main thrust of this particular uh, video here you can see the program we've looked at earlier in the playlist and this is the same program that I've altered slightly very slightly in fact but if you have a look here you can see I've got the word end following end there's a space then there's the equal sign then there's the space and then we have the double quotes if we look here you can see there's the word end then the equal sign immediately follows there's no space between the end and the equal sign immediately after the equal sign you can see we've opened the double quotes the second program adopts the style that's recommended by the Python manuals and most Python programmers would follow this style does it mean the first one is wrong no it means you haven't followed the style that most Python programmers would follow both programs I must stress work in exactly the same way in the same way we have style when we indent in Python most Python programs indent with four spaces when they use things like the if and the while etc 
and this is another illustration of the use of style in your Python programs. This is the program that we looked at right at the very beginning of this particular video and you can see that it used print statements. Now the print statements required that as a programmer I put spaces here and here and use these operators which actually joined the strings together. Now I was responsible for ensuring that the spaces were in the correct place so as when the output appeared for the user to view it didn't all appear all crunched up together as we've demonstrated in this particular video already. Alternative to this use of print we have this here where we don't have to worry about the spaces we simply use this at the end and I hope you agree that this particular way of doing it is much better than the first method. Before we finish this video just one more thing I wish to show you if we have a look at this program which is the one we've just been observing we can see that there's been extensive use of these quotes here. Now the following program behaves in exactly the same way except you can see we've used the different quotes, the single quote compared to these two quotes being right next to each other here. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.